Right guys, today we're going to be talking a little bit about crested geckos. I'm Scott from Motion Calls and Reptiles in York. And we're going to touch on the type of setup you want to be setting up for these guys, what sort of care they need, why they're a great beginner species of reptile to keep. Um, these guys come from a place in between, well an island, a group of islands in fact, in between Australia and Fiji. Um, they eat bugs, uh, crickets, locusts, waxworms, but they'll also eat a fruit based diet which you can actually buy pre-made. It's just a powder that you mix up. So for people that are a bit squeamish of the crickets and the bugs etc, you can get a powder with the crickets inside them. Uh, and that's called Grub and Fruit Rapashi, which is a good one. Uh, we feed these guys on mango rapashi, which is a nice uh, a nice powdered diet, and we also feed them on crickets, um, which we dust with calcium with vitamin D3. Uh, they don't need UV uh, as such, but they do need daylight as to give them a, a, a daytime circle, so obviously when the sun rises and the sun sets. But the best way to set these guys up in my opinion is go bioactive, so live plants uh, and then you have little springtails in there, tropical wood lice, they clean up all the poo so you never have to clean the tank out, all you do is clean the glass. So something like a 30 by 30 by 45 centimetre exoterra or Zuma tank, glass tank, uh, is going to get you started with a baby one of these. Uh, and then you might want to upgrade to a 45 by 45 by 60 centimetre or bigger depending on how many you want to keep and how you want to display the tank. So if you're going bioactive, uh, what you do is you have a, a layer of drainage balls at the bottom, a bit like these tanks behind me. And then you have a mesh or filter wool to divide the drainage layer from your substrate to stop it drowning out your land section. Then you add your springtails and your tropical wood lice and your clean up crew in there. Uh, plants, live plants, which you can find reptile safe plants uh, if you type in on Google. Even come in and see us in store and we'll tell you what sort of plants uh, you can have with these guys. And you want branches in there because they do, they do like to climb, you'll rarely see them on the bottom of the tank. Uh, unless they dig in to lay eggs, obviously. Also, you want to be spraying these guys. I mean, these guys like humidity, so what you want to do is spray them once in the morning or once in the night time, really. Uh, you may well get away with once a day, but I'd suggest twice a day. Uh, water bowl in there is going to raise the humidity as well, so. I mean these guys want to be sitting around about 50 to 70 percent humidity wise. Temperatures uh, they can range from at the highest 85 degrees Fahrenheit going right down to the mid 60s um, but not for a long period of time so they will take the nighttime drop to the mid 60s. During the day really you want to be keeping them mid 70s so how you do that is if you go in bioactive instead of having plastic plants you'd have a UV in there uh, 2 or 5% UV uh, that, that's what keeps your plants alive it also benefits these animals but it will provide a little bit of heat so that will raise the ambient air temperature in the tank and if it's not quite there you can use a heat mat on a mat stack and set that to whatever you require so personally at home I have mine set so it's at 70 so it never drops below 70 um, and then normally during the day it sits around about 78 to 82 Fahrenheit um, also there's plenty of different moths with these guys this one's a red patternless I don't know if you can see there uh, you can get Dalmatian Tigers, harlequins, creamsicles, pinstripes, and so on. 
it just depends what coloration you you like the best really um, what else do we need to talk about these guys yeah there, obviously you can see here uh, this one has got a drop tail so it's nothing to worry about sometimes they drop the tail when they're young and they're squabbling on the food or in the wild they actually drop the tail when a predator tries to get hold of them the only thing with these is they never grow the tail back unlike leopard geckos leopard geckos drop the tail and they'll grow it back with crested geckos they don't grow it back it's not a problem um, most of them do keep the tail retain the tail it's just sometimes it happens uh, yeah and obviously you can see me holding this chap here he's not trying to get away from me he's quite easy to handle with the smaller with the babies they are a little bit faster they are a little bit jumpier but it's just getting used to them uh, I mean if you buy a baby and you take it home and you handle it and it gets used to you and you get used to it then it's going to be a lot more calmer like this chap here this guy is around about 18 months old to two two years old roughly um, and that's normally when they hit maturity around about 18 months old so they'll become sexually active so if you ever think about breeding these that's the time they become sexually, sexually active um, what else can I say about them I think we've touched on most things we'll probably do another video later on uh, in a few weeks time or a few months time uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Ocean Coals and Reptiles, and give us a like on Facebook as well, at Ocean Coals and Reptiles. And thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Hi, guys. This is Jimmy's question of the week. What is the nickname of our lipstick tank in our 3,000 litre display tank?